Hey class, for this week and next week, you're going to be doing the VO2 Max Lab. The idea behind this is four people in your group will be doing one of the four different tests. So we'll probably run two tests this week and two tests next week. Just so that uh, like the you're not in lab for uh, a ridiculous amount of time. But let's talk about VO2 max just a little bit. So VO2 max is the maximal oxygen uptake, or you know, it's just note as VO2 subscript max. So it is the measure of the highest rate that oxygen can be taken up into the blood, transported to the tissues, and utilized by the mitochondria of cells in oxidative phosphorylation, particularly in muscle cells. It can be expressed two different ways, so as absolute values and relative values. <clears throat> in absolute terms, it's notated as liters of oxygen per minute, and in relative terms, it's notated as milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute. Now, normally, we compare individuals' absolute VO2 maxes whenever body weight isn't really much of a concern. One example would be in the context of cycling. Whenever you're cycling, you're not really supporting your body weight that much. Now, we use relative values whenever people are uh, where their body weight actually matters quite considerably, as in running. So when, whenever you're running, how much you weigh does kind of dictate like how fast you can uh, cover a given distance. So we would use that value, uh, a, a relative VO2 max value for that. Now, there's a few things that a VO2 max test needs to do. So it needs to utilize large muscle groups. We need, you need to measure the workloads and it needs to be reproducible. And the duration needs to be two to three minutes for each stage of the test, which you know will increase the intensity every stage. And the reason for that two to three minutes, it typically takes two to three minutes for the aerobic system to um, kind of kick into gear to start producing the majority of the energy. And also, we're just going to kind of assume that everyone's mechanical efficiency is approximately the same. Now, if we had a really trained runner, then all of these protocols might overpredict what their VO2 max is, but we'll just assume that everyone's mechanical efficiency is approximately the same, and it, it typically is. <clears throat> uh, last thing, the test needs to be appropriate for the population being tested. So we have four different tests. Two are running on a treadmill, one is walking on a treadmill, and the other is cycling on a bike. Now, we might want uh, someone with really bad knees. We might not want them to run. Uh, we might not want them to bike for whatever reason. So we might want them to walk on a treadmill at increase in inclines. So that's somewhat of a judgment call on like what a person would be willing to do or what they could do. Next, there's four criteria that I want you to know in determining a true VO2 max. So this first one being blood lactate levels above eight millimoles per liter. Now that's just an indication that their metabolism is doing mostly anaerobic means of uh, producing energy. Now we aren't measuring that today because uh, I, I'm still waiting on uh, buying a blood lactate analyzer. Another thing which we actually will measure today, um, heart rate within 10 beats of age estimated heart rate max. So if you don't know what that is, how you predict your heart rate max, it's just 220 minus your age. So if you're a 20 year old, then 220 minus 20 is 200. So if you're a 20 year old, then we predict that your max heart rate would be around 200 beats per minute. Next, an R value, above 1.1. So if you remember from last week, the ventilatory thresholds, then you should be huffing and puffing at the end. Next, an RPE greater than 17. If you've never seen RPE before, all it stands for is rate of perceived exertion. And this is what that looks like. So if an individual is doing no exertion or extremely light exertion, they would do a six or a seven. 
or they would say six or seven. 13 for somewhat hard, 20 for maximal exertion. So the, in the example of a 20-year-old that I was talking about a second ago, if your max heart rate is 200 beats per minute, maximal exertion, 20, interesting. Their heart rate might be at 60 beats per minute whenever they're not doing anything. It might be at 130 beats per minute whenever they're doing something that's somewhat difficult or hard. So that's basically how the uh, perceived exertion scale was uh, put together. Uh, next here, there's um, maximal, like VO2 max norms for both men and women, and all of these are in relative values. So you'll come back and look at this later to put people in like average, good, poor, whatever category. Now, what we're gonna be doing this first treadmill protocol, I wanted to like go over this with you. At, at the first stage, you'll just be going three miles per hour at a 2% incline, and you'll measure VO2. We're actually going to put a mask on someone and measure it. We'll also predict the VO2, and we'll measure heart rate and ask them their RPE. So that's zero to three minutes, and they will just pick a speed that they want to run at over five miles an hour, and we'll just keep on increasing the incline until they can't do it anymore. Now let's talk about some things. So I want you to put a scatter plot with a primary and secondary y-axis with predicted VO2 and heart rate on those two y-axes and then stage on the x-axis. Okay, so hopefully uh, you have this file pulled up so let's look at how to do that. So we're actually gonna be measuring um, VO2, but our metabolic carts are a little bit wonky. So I wanted us to predict what the VO2s are as well because uh, these metabolic equations are uh, actually really accurate. And I did something for you. I highlighted in yellow the only places I ever want you to put numbers. So. If it's not highlighted on these equations, uh, and it's the same for this uh, cycle one, if it's not highlighted, don't write there, at least within the equation. Now here, you will write quite a bit. So let's say that uh, someone is 165 pounds and their speed is six miles per hour and they're at a two. A two percent incline. So, right here, if that's what we're at, we would put 38.5. Now, if we increased it to a four, it would go up to 41 point uh, like four, and so on and so forth. And like heart rates, it could be at like uh, 120, 130 so on and so forth. Now let's look at how to really put together the um, graph that I want you to do. So follow along with this. Now look here, the y-axis need to be predicted VO2 and heart rate. So let's pull that up. If you highlight stage right there, and then you hold down control, and then you highlight both of these, You can go up here to insert, go on right here to scatter plot. Let's click on that one. All right. So, this value, that is the heart rate. So, I want you to double click on that, and I want that to be our secondary y axis. Okay, so let's delete all of these. Let's make this look really good. Enter here, treadmill, treadmill. And then down here, I want you to select the data. VO2, okay. 
and this one, let's make this heart. Okay, there we go there. Now let's add some chart elements. Axis title, primary vertical. So what's this? It is VO2 ML slash KG slash MIN. The other y-axis, uh, secondary vertical, right there. That's heart rate in beats per minute. So hopefully you can see that pretty well right there. So how I highlighted that, super interesting, because you can just do this. Let's say that their initial VO2 is a 7. It goes up to a 15. And here it's a 20, 25, 30, 35, so on and so forth. And then the heart rate, if, say, they start at, um, I don't know, 90 maybe, 100, 110, 115, 125. See, so really, it basically will just do it for you, and you just have them keep on going until they're at their very top. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go back to here. You would uh, like copy and paste that scatter plot, put it right here, figure out what norm of category they're in and tell me what their VO2 max is. So that's just the highest level that they're at. Then think about what population would this test be good for and bad for. So for the cycle ergometer, it's uh, uh, fairly similar. So enter all of these things. Then here's the protocol that we're following. So they're gonna be going at uh, 50 revolutions per minute, we're going to be increasing one kilogram every stage, every three minute stage. And um, that's really just like how that wattage works. And we're gonna figure out what their top uh, wattage is. And we're going to measure their VO2 max and predict, do heart rate and RP. Now here I say predicted VO2 and RP. So let's look at how to do that. There we go. Okay, so here, cycle ergometer. <clears throat> so again, highlight the stage, and then highlight that, and highlight that. So let's insert. Okay, so let's say 25. Oh, no, not 25. That's not what it's going to be. Come on. Okay, let's say 10, uh, 15. Here, let's say they're at 7, uh, 9, so on. And then click on that again. Let's make that a secondary y axis. All right, looking kind of good, huh? Then you would do all of the same things of making that the proper term. So select data, click on that. Oop, that's not what I want to do. Okay, not remove, edit. Sorry. <clears throat> then VO2. Okay, then series two, edit RPE. Then cycle ergometer. Gosh, I hope I spelled that right. That would be fun if I didn't, huh? Taking all of that out and the chart elements. And then VO2 ml per kg per min. And then here, RP. Just pretty simple, just like that. And you could fill it all out. And again, here, only put um, numbers in 
the highlighted spots, and then you would copy and paste this over to this document. So there's a cyclergometer one. This next one, the bulky protocol. This one is essentially just walking. It's a little bit different um, uh, than the other ones. Uh, so there's one for males and one for females, and the protocols are different. And I actually showed them right here. So here's the male bulky protocol, and here's the female bulky protocol. Oh, I don't want that T to show. There we go. Good. Okay. So let's look back and see what you're going to do. Okay. So insert a scatter plot, stage on x axis, heart rate on y axis, RP on the secondary y axis. So essentially, what we have been doing, let's say that a female was going. So stage, highlight that, highlight these. Insert scatter plot right there. So let's say there are rate 95, 105, so on, and RP7, um, like 10, all of that. Then there, we're going to put double click on that secondary y axis. Click on this, select data, edit. What is that? Oh, yeah, it's heart rate. Gosh. There, and this RPE. There we go. All of that's labeled. Let's close that, make that go away. And then here you have the bulky protocol. Just bulky is enough. And of course, put these y axes on there and fill those out with heart rate beats per minute and RPE right there. Now, down here, however long they make it, how you answer this, if they make it, uh, gosh, like 25 minutes and 36 seconds until they pretty much have to stop then their VO2 max would be 40 um, minutes. Uh, not 40 minutes, I'm sorry. 40 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight. That's at least how the bulky protocol would predict it. And over here for the men, it works approximately the same. If they make it 15 minutes and 30 seconds, that's how that goes. Then here, you would answer the rest of these. What, who would it be good for or bad for? Uh, use your imagination with some of those. And here onto this last one, the Bruce protocol name, all of that, filling this stuff out. So heart rate RPE. Here are the speeds. I just, I uh, really, I just put the kilometers uh, per hour, uh, really just so you could see it. Um, so down here, insert a scatter plot. Uh, stage on the x-axis, heart rate and RP on the y-axis. So how that's going to look, let's go back to our Excel file. Bruce. Like Bruce Wayne. Good. Okay. There. Highlight that. Highlight these. Insert scatter plot. We have that. And then we can just start Put in your numbers in, and then it should graph it for you. All of that, and here, double click on these. Over here, this should pop up, secondary axis, make that go away. Bruce. And there, I'm not going to show you again. You should remember how to make those and putting the axes on there. Actually, I'm going to show you again just uh, so that you don't get confused. So that's heart rate right there. And that is RPE. Good. OK, there. Delete all of these things. Uh, 
right beats per minute over here rp oh gosh i almost forgot what i was doing okay there we go and literally you can just keep on filling this in until they stop and it should graph it for you if you follow it that way um oh yeah i initially had you doing this for two different people go and delete that we're only doing it for uh, one person so minutes let's say they make it um i don't know 14 minutes and 30 seconds then that is our uh, relative vo2 and you'll paste all of those things in and there it is normative category and everything so that is it there's uh, some questions here i'm going to talk about that equation in class it's called the thick equation uh, so you can look that up before but uh, like I'll, I'll show you what it is and we'll talk about it that one hopefully you remember from me talking and then uh, uh, which criteria are we actually measuring in class out of all of those so hopefully all that made sense uh, see you on class.